Hello again. I have 10 new vocabulary words for you. As usual, I'm going to say the vocabulary word so you can hear the pronunciation. Then I'm going to spell the vocabulary word so you can practice some dictation and spelling at home. The first word is aim. A I M. Aim. A I M. Great word. I love this word. Love this word in English. Aim. Aim is to focus on something. You can think about sometimes when people go hunting, they're focusing, right? They're focusing and they have their target, all right? They're looking at the target and they aim for the target, okay? They're aiming. They want to hit the target, to, all right? To aim, to focus your attention on something. It also has the idea of to plan to do something, to have an intention to do something. For example, I aim to make three more vocabulary videos after this one. I think that's right. Eight, nine, ten. Yes. <laughs> um, I aim to make three more vocabulary words, three more vocabulary videos after this one. That is my intention. Okay, so that way... In total, we will have 20, 20 vocabulary videos, all right, 20 chapters, three more. And this word aim, again, the idea of to focus, to have an intention, to have a goal, or a, a target. Aim can be a verb, which is the act of focusing or planning. Aim can also be a noun to, to talk about the actual target. What is your aim for studying English? What is your goal or your target, your purpose? All right. Next word, approach. A P P R O A C H. A P P R O A C H. Approach. All right. Approach can be your method, your process, the way that you attempt to do something. For example, my approach to teaching English in the classroom is to teach vocabulary as well as play a lot of games and have students participate in conversation, real conversation with native English speakers. In the Spanish classes that I teach, I, ha I ask my students to engage in real Spanish conversation, doing cultural exchanges between English speakers and Spanish speakers, coming together to make a beautiful bridge of languages. Excellent. That's one of my approaches to teaching. I also teach the grammar, of course. I have students practice making sentences and correcting each other's sentences. That is a method that I use that is an approach I use to help students learn the language. Your approach may be watching these vocabulary videos or maybe some other uh, language videos online, watching movies, listening to music, making friends that speak the language that you want to learn. It's all part of the cultural bridge in the learning process. But approach also has an idea of to come close to something. All right, for example, I'm far away and I am approaching the computer screen. I'm coming close to the computer approach to come close to something. And that idea we also could think about with the other definition. If you say you want to learn English, how are you coming close to learning the language? Okay. This idea, this definition to come close to something. In Spanish, it would be something like acercar, all right, to come close to something. Now, the next word, current, current, C-U-R-R-E-N-T, C-U-R-R-E-N-T, current. Current would be like in Spanish, actual, something that is happening now. 
okay current something happening now all right current and the next word custom c u s t o m c u s t o m you may have seen this word before but it actually has two very different meanings depending on if you are using the adjective or the noun how this word ha has these two very different definitions i don't know there's probably a reason probably an explanation i don't have this one yet but for custom as a noun it's really synonymous with the idea of a tradition for example in the united states it is a custom to celebrate Thanksgiving, all right, in November, we celebrate Thanksgiving, and it is a custom during Thanksgiving to eat turkey with your family, with your friends, maybe invite some people that you don't know, maybe your neighbors that you don't talk to that much, invite them to your house, have a great connection, make a bridge with your neighbors, share a great American tradition with them. That is, uh, Thanksgiving is a custom. Having turkey is the custom, etc. Christmas is another custom that we have in many countries. A tradition that has been celebrated for a long time. Okay? Many, many generations. It is a custom. Something traditional. Maybe in your country you have a different custom. You have different traditions. But custom also can mean when it's used as an adjective. Something that is new something that is unique something that is not common so again two very different definitions for the same spelling same pronunciation of this word but two different uses a noun and an adjective as an adjective we would say something like i have a custom bicycle meaning it's unique it was made specifically for myself it was personalized okay custom or maybe you could say, I have a custom guitar. Not true. I don't have a custom bicycle. I do not have a custom guitar. They're just examples. Um, I think that would be a little expensive. But a custom guitar, you would say something like, it was personalized for you, made specifically for you, unique, different from other guitars. Okay? Custom. A custom guitar. A unique, specialized, personalized guitar. All right. Next word, generation. G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O-N. Generation. G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O-N. Generation. All right. A generation is a group of people that are approximately, that are close to the same age. Approximately or close to the same age. A generation. For example, maybe everyone who was born between 1940 and 1950 are from one generation. We have some different ways of classifying a generation, for example, millennials. Right now we have a millennial generation. I think part of the concept is that people that grew up after, you know, grew up uh, really growing up and coming into their adulthood or teenage years after 2000. But I think part of the concept is also people who grew up with a strong connection to social media, the internet. Um, things that have become a big part of our lives and are very integrated into our generation's lives. So we have a generation that really has mm, integrated these, these habits and these concepts into their lives. You might think about a generation in a different way. You might think about your grandparents, their generation, their group of, um, of the group of that same age with a different mindset, different concepts, okay? Uh, an example, you might say, I really like music from my parents' generation. 
I like the music from their age group. Okay. Um, next word, influence. I N F L U E N C E. I N F L U E N C E. Influence. Influence. Ooh. Influence is to affect or change something or someone, right? You could have a bad influence, <laughs> maybe a person or a thing that, that changes you in a bad way, or you could have a good influence, someone that encourages you to do good things, to be a better person, right? Okay, influence. Lots of things can influence you, can change the way you think or affect the way that you think. Sometimes even the food we eat, I think maybe people don't realize the food that we're eating sometimes influences the way we think and the way we behave in negative or positive ways. You know, we need to kind of reconnect, I think, with the design and function of our, of our bodies. Amazing, uh, amazing creation that it is. And uh, next, next word, moral. Moral, M-O-R-A-L, M-O-R-A-L. You may have a similar word in your native language, moral, but which is basically your beliefs or ideas of what is good and bad, okay? Something good or bad, right or wrong, correct or incorrect behavior, moral. For example, many children's movies teach a good moral. They have a, a message or a lesson that they want to communicate about correct, appropriate, good behavior in soci society, a moral, an idea of right and wrong, good and bad. All right. Preserve. P R E S E. R V E P R E S E R V E preserve preserve okay preserve is to keep something safe to keep something and to protect it so it does not decay it does not become destroyed it does not become damaged for example Imagine you have mm, some strawberries, okay, and you you mush down the mush down the strawberries, put them in a jar, you know, put some other uh, condiments in there and some other uh, ingredients to preserve the strawberries to keep them safe and fresh, so you can eat them later. Maybe make a jelly or something like that, right? You preserve the strawberries, or maybe you put the strawberries in your freezer. So you can make a nice smoothie later, all right? To preserve, to keep them safe, to keep them so that they do not decay or become damaged, okay? To preserve. Regard. Regard. R, E, G, A, R, D. R, E, G, A, R, D. D. Regard. Regard is very similar to the word respect, okay, but used as a, as a verb. You could say, I respect Martin Luther King Jr. for his philosophy and his ability to communicate for his vision for the country. I regard him as a great example of a speaker and a philosopher, an American philosopher, okay? Regard, to respect someone. Style, S-T-Y-L-E, S-T-Y-L-E, style, style, wow. <laughs> okay, style is like the way that you do something. I think we have the idea of it being a distinct way of doing something, something a little 
a little different, a little unique. But however you see it, the idea of the way you do something. Okay. Similar to the word approach. But this idea is your flavor. Your little flavor of the way you do something. Style might be an accent. The way that you speak English or Spanish or another language. It could be your style of speaking the language, an accent, or even the rhythm with which you speak. Maybe you have a very fast style and you talk like this all the time. <laughs> or maybe you have a very relaxed, patient, calm style. <laughs> or maybe, you know, just a little groove to the way you speak. You could have a different style of speaking. You have clothing style, of course, the way that you dress. Okay, your concept of fashion and the way that you express yourself. There are lots of different ways we use style. You could have a writing style from the way that it looks to the words that you choose. You could have mm, a, a style of, of riding your bicycle. Okay, maybe you ride it a little different, something like that. But whatever you're doing, you have a style, a way that you do it the style. Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson today and keep studying.